So, folks, I went to see this Oppenheimer movie over the weekend. Loved the movie. Bit too dramatic for me at times. Bit too loud for me at times. Um, but, you know, this was a terrific movie for folks that have seen it or who know a bit about history. Right? J. Robert Oppenheimer was the father of the atomic bomb. He was the guy that was the director of the laboratory that was established by the Manhattan Project to develop the world's first atomic bomb in an effort to help the Americans in World War II. And that is the bomb that won the Americans World War II, right? Won the war for the Allied powers over Japan, right? Bit of a history lesson for you. And then after his duty was done, the story goes, depending on who you listen to, that he was dealt away with by the U.S. government, partially due to communist ties and relationships that he's held and and folks he rubbed the wrong way and so on and so forth. And at that time, the U.S. government had established something called the AEC, the Atomic Energy Commission. The Atomic Energy Commission was a government agency that oversaw the regulation of atomic development, really, in the United States. That's an agency that doesn't exist anymore. And the U.S. government and agents of the U.S. government, again, the story goes, acted in a way so as to deprive J. Robert Oppenheimer of his security clearance, which effectively meant that he could not be affiliated with the U.S. government anymore in any way. And if you saw the movie, you will see that there was a hearing conducted by the AEC in order to deprive him of that security clearance. And it was presented in the movie as being unfair, depriving him of due process, so on and so forth. So let's talk a bit about that. If and when the government wants to take something away from you, irrespective of what it is, they have to comply with standards governing what are called the rules of due process, right? Basically, if the government here in the United States wants to take away anything from you, your freedom, your property, your driver's license, anything, they must afford you due process. They must afford you notice and an opportunity to defend yourself, vaguely speaking. Right. And that is what they afforded J. Robert Oppenheimer. And that is what the law scenes were all about, where witnesses would testify as to their interactions with him and he would get to cross examine those witnesses, so on and so forth. Now, in these proceedings, right, before government agencies, these proceedings are not courts of law. And so the standards of law, the standards of evidence, uh, the rules governing what is admissible, procedure, right? All those rules are relaxed, right? So in that scene, you will see J. Robert Oppenheimer's lawyer trying to fight for what is called discovery, right? The turning over of documents. And discovery is something that exists in court in any legal case, right? One side must turn over to the other documents, that it is planning on using in court against the party to whom the documents are being turned over. In proceedings before government agencies, such as the AEC, for example, those rules are relaxed. And so you saw in the movie how none of these documents were turned over, witnesses were withheld, and other crucial information was withheld. And that may seem unfair. But the way that the rules of the country are structured in these proceedings that are before government agencies, these rules are relaxed, right? For example, in a court of law, in a criminal case, in a civil case, there are rules of evidence in place. What evidence can come into the case? Is certain ev evidence relevant as opposed to irrelevant? Is it prejudicial? So on and so forth. In these proceedings before government agencies, these rules don't exist. So it may have seemed unfair, and perhaps it was, but that is how the law functions when it comes to these proceedings before government agencies, not in court. Now, something else that is different in these proceedings is the burden of proof, right? You hear that phrase a lot, burden of proof. In a criminal case, the government trying to put you in jail, let's say, has to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt right? That is the highest standard of proof that we have in the United States. In a civil case, 
the standard is preponderance of the evidence, as it's called, right? More likely than not. And there are other rules of evidence that govern legal proceedings, depending on where you are, um, substantial evidence, so on and so forth. In government agency proceedings, the standards are typically lower than they are in criminal cases, than they are in civil cases. And so when you saw at the end of the proceeding, one member of the panel find him not responsible or find him not liable or find him as not committing any offenses, the other two did, right? And that's enough. And it's also important to note that the standard is very low. So that is how generally these proceedings work. And that is why it seems so strange. People were looking around uh, the theater when I was there and they were saying, well, how could this happen? This is a man of such importance, of such repute, and he was dealt with in this way. The standards in these proceedings, irrespective of who you are, are incredibly low. So it's important to keep that in mind. And at the end of the day, J. Robert Oppenheimer's security clearance was taken away, was revoked. And so it's important to keep in mind how all of these different systems within our government work. And it's important to keep in mind what the government has to do under what circumstances to take something away from you.